Kurt Levine is often referred to as the father of social psychology, but his contributions have also profoundly impacted work in organizational, applied, and community psychology. His pioneering work studying group and organizational dynamics, processes of individual change, and factors of social situations created his legacy as one of the most influential psychologists of the 20th century. Levine, pronounced Levine, not Lewin, was born in 1890 to one of the few Jewish families in the town of Mogilno. Mogilno was located at the time in Prussia, which was then part of the German Empire, and is now located in modern-day Poland. His family was middle class, and he was one of four children. His family moved to Berlin in 1905 to further Levine's education, but Levine had to serve in World War II in the German army before completing his PhD. Following the war, Levine returned to the University of Berlin and earned his doctorate in psychology under the direction of Karl Stumpf. Levine worked as a Gestalt psychologist in Germany until Hitler came to power in 1933, forcing him and his family to flee to the United States. He immigrated to the U.S. and became a naturalized citizen. Here in the U.S., he spent the majority of his professional time as a researcher and professor at Cornell University and MIT, and it was during that time that he made his most influential contributions to the field. Levine produced a number of theories in his career that changed the way psychologists approach group dynamics and how best to conduct psychological research. Levine held that theories should not be frameworks of abstract speculation, but rather a means to learn about the human mind in practice. His ability to produce theories that had clear real-world application earned him the title of the practical theorist among his peers. One of Levine's most famous contributions is also one of his simplest. Levine's equation, as it has come to be known, describes a heuristic formula for understanding behavior such that a person's behavior, B, will be determined by the interaction between a person's unique traits, characteristics, and experiences, P, and the environment the person is in currently, E. Levine stated that while, in aggregate, the person and situation were of equal importance in explaining behavior, in specific cir circumstances, either person or situation is likely to outweigh the other factor. However, according to Levine, one must take the whole situation to, into account and realize that the whole situation is always a dynamic system. Levine took the idea of interactionism that is expressed by his equation and began to apply it to real-world social situations and systems. The result was a set of theories that all incorporated the idea that social and group dynamics were best understood by researching them in action. That is to say, observing group dynamics by changing the social or organizational systems in which they took place. Broadly, this way of approaching research on the interaction between a person and their social or group environment was known as action research. In Levine's field theory, his action orientation and gestalt training come into clear view. In field theory, the field is the overall psychological environment that an individual perceives at a given time in their mind. Importantly, the whole of this environment is greater than the sum of its parts, and it changes over the course of time and with the addition of new experiences. Levine found ways to mathematically describe the constructs within this environment, such as motivations, needs, traits, abilities, and goals. Change in the field, an outcome in the field, depends on the interaction of the person and the forces in their environment. For Levine, change occurs when an individual has an experience with an external stimulus that is an external force in their field. Here is another conceptualization of field theory, in which we can see the individual navigating the forces both for and against a particular change within their life space. One of the practical uses of field theory is the force field analysis. The force field analysis provides a framework by which to quantify factors in an environment to assess if change is likely to take place. If the forces in favor of change overwhelm those restraining change, then the change will take place. If they are not, then the present state will remain. This follows naturally into Levine's theory of change, which describes the process by which change takes place when forces for change are greater than forces restraining change. Change, according to Levine and his research, takes place in three stages. In the first stage, unfreeze, the present state or status quo is disrupted as forces for change become greater than those restraining change. Put another way, after facing a dilemma or crisis, an individual or group of individuals identifies a need for change. In the next stage, change, 
the situation and environment is assessed and new behaviors to achieve the desired change are implemented. In the final stage, refreeze, the behaviors are evaluated, and if they are achieving the desired change, they are solidified and cemented, and the change state becomes the new present state or status quo. All of these come together to form action research as it is used by individuals, groups, and organizations today. In conclusion, Kurt Levine provided many strong contributions, but those presented here are the best known and had the greatest influence on psychology as a field. Levine's theories left an indelible mark changing the way scientists saw social processes and creating a mean to study them effectively through social psychology.